Hi guys, it's Sophie. So today I want to do my non-fiction November wrap-up for you. I read a lot of stuff this month and I'm pretty damn pleased with how much I managed to fit in, especially considering this isn't everything I read this month. Tomorrow's video will be um, my rest of the month wrap-up. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with it, we're gonna jump straight in. Okay, so the first book that I got to was Grunt by Mary Roach. And the subtitle of these, because non-fiction always have subtitles, is The Curious Science of Soldiers at War. Um, this was my first Mary Roach and I've been really looking forward to reading her work. I'd actually been looking for Stiff, um, but I really enjoyed this book. It is talking about all the myriad ways in which the forces, specifically the American side of things, um, but I suspect it would be pretty pretty similar wherever you go, um, try and keep soldiers alive. Um, so they aren't focusing on mechanics and the experience of war itself, they're more talking about the very human side of um, caring for one's own, own sort of soldiers and the very clever and innovative ways that we try and keep people alive in battle zones. It's definitely something that I don't know all that much about, um, but her writing was really accessible, she is very funny, um, and I've gained a few sort of new party facts, I guess, from this book. So if that sounds interesting to you, then I would really recommend you pick this one up. And the next one I listened to on audiobook, and that was Between the World and Me by Tana Hesse Coates. Now this is an essay, um, or sort of extended letter, written between Tana Hesse Coates and his son. Now I know a lot of people on booktube have spoken about this book already, so I'm not going to go into any great detail here. Um, but it's a really hard-hitting um, essay, really hard-hitting communication, and it's beautifully written. It's focusing around race interrelations, um, again, in America, um, but it's written in such a loving and caring way about these, these really awful um, things and prejudices. Um, it's one of those kind of books that I feel that, because I'm white, it's really important that I read and I listen to those kind of voices. Um, and whilst I know I'm late to this parade, I'm definitely glad that I did go ahead and listen to this one in the end. And then the next one I read was The World Is Elsewhere by Chris McKeever. Um And this is actually the middle of his book, which I didn't realise. He writes um, about his travels and about his work um, in developing countries with charities. Um, specifically talking about Cuba in this one, although to be honest there are a fair amount of um, other countries that he's talking about and visiting. Um, it was interesting, um, I didn't find it was sort of my favourite thing to read, I have to admit. I think it um, didn't focus so much on the charity work as it did his experience of having worked in that way, which I find less interesting. I would have would have preferred to have known what it was that he was actually doing. And, and um, we had a good sense of place and a good sense of those cultures, but I think it probably would have been more powerful if I'd have just picked something up from writers from those countries, um, which is good. I mean, at least I know that, but it's interesting. I just don't think that sort of travel memoir thing is my style. Um, probably prefer to read sort of own voices stuff. And the next one I picked up was Mark Grief's Against Everything. Now this is an essay collection on a range of different topics going from dieting to the role of youth and sexuality um, in the media and in the way in which we sell things to attitudes to life and, and sort of wider issues to music choice. Um, it's a really really interesting collection of essays and there are actually a couple of ideas in here that I have not been able to get out of my head since reading it at the beginning of this month, and a couple of ideas that I have actually taken into my own life. Um, I think he's a really, really intelligent writer, and I actually enjoyed every single one of these essays. Really glad that I got around to this one, even though it was kind of blind. Um, and if you do like essay collections, then then I really recommend this one. Um, if you're new to essays, maybe he isn't the most approachable style, but I do think the content's brilliant. So if it sounds interesting, then maybe you might enjoy this one. And the next one I got around to was on audiobook, and that was Sapiens by, I think it, his name is Yuval Noah Harari, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure that that first name has been pronounced right, at least. Um, but this book was, was fascinating, I'd heard about it on Jane Campbell's channel but it was a while ago and um, I think it's because Dias, which is his next book, is coming out um, and I just fancy sort of jumping on and, and seeing what it is, what's about. Um, it's really sort of a history of all of humanity um, from sort of Homo sapiens um, split as uh, sort of a historical event all the way through up to modern times. Um, it was one of those things where it was just the entire thing was told in a really accessible way but in a way that made you feel as though you were getting more intelligent as you were reading it and um, a little bit was new for me which was interesting. It's exactly the kind of thing that my brother loves and he has now listened to the book which is very rare, he doesn't read or listen to too much throughout the year and he's loved it too. Um, 
So I think if you're interested in sort of early human history, then it's definitely one that you need to get hold of. If you're not, but you are interested in sort of the human condition or the way um, that we see the world, then again, it's, it's really interesting and I'm really glad that I got the chance to listen to that one. And then next I have Feminist Fight Club by Jessica Bennett and the reason I picked this one up because I read a little bit of feminist stuff, you guys have seen I read stuff throughout the year, but this one was specifically directed at um, sort of the workplace which was something I hadn't read about before. I think a lot of the time the sort of feminist texts that I read are around sort of general life and often personal life um, and it was just really interesting to me to see it specifically focus on workplace issues. It's a very light book, it's very tumblery, is what I would say. So you have these sort of drawings throughout, um, and you have sort of, I'm not really sure, like you have um, very sort of easy, easy writing. So they, she goes through and will have sort of different types of people who you might find in your workplace, and it's all sort of very humorously written. Um, I think they say that they, it, within the book, that the message is serious but the book itself is very light. Um, I didn't find anything new in here at all, I have to say, but I did find it enjoyable. I really like the pictures. I think this is something that would be useful to women or men who are potentially just entering the workplace and for whom um, the kind of things that people might face at the beginning of their career, um, that they might just need to be aware of those things. Um, it's the kind of book that I would have loved when I went into my first job, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, but yeah, so I think it's interesting, I don't think it's anything new, um, but I do think if you have someone in your life who is sort of 16 to 18 and is about to go into the world of work, it might open their eyes a little bit, but hopefully not scare them off. And the next one that I read, I could do an entire review video of. If you'd like me to do that, then just let me know down below. Um, but that is Patient HM by Luke Dittrich, which is such a good book, it's brilliant. It's um, all about neurosurgery gone wrong and the effects of ambitious and brilliant surgeons um, feeling that they know best for patients. Um, it's about memory, it's about psychiatry, it's about the treatment of, of patients as data points. Um, it's just a brilliant book. And this is the author's first book. He has written articles elsewhere, but this is the first thing that he's written that is of a significant length. Um, and I cannot wait to see what he puts out next. This is probably my favorite book, I think, of nonfiction that I read in November. And then the next one I have is The Shock Doctrine by Naomi Klein. Um, this book and I had a sort of mixed experience. Um, I found it very hard to read. I found it very complicated and I found it quite new material. Um, it's talking about the way in which the sort of shock and awe tactic of um, sort of military forces is sort of parodied in the economic system in developing countries and about how the states, America particularly, um, how they have an impact on the development of these countries and how um, they push towards these sort of capitalist um, agendas because that's what would benefit the country at the heart, the sort of Western world. Um, I don't know how I feel about it, as I say, it's the kind of thing that I'm very glad I read. I haven't made my mind up on it yet, it's been a little bit of time, um, but I'm still figuring out how I feel about it. I've got Noam Chomsky to read as well, and his book Failed States is on quite a similar kind of theme, so I think I'm going to keep learning and keep digging, um, but this is very new to me, so I don't know whether I can recommend this or not, but I do think it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing to have read about, um, let's put it that way. I think you're going to know whether this is going to be the kind of thing you're interested in or not um, from that limited description I've given you there. And the next one was another one that I listened to, um, and that was Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Now I've had this book hanging around on my phone for ages and finally finished it off. And I'm sorry to everyone who loves Amy Poehler, but I don't think she is the kind of funny I enjoy. Um, I listened to the book and she was moderately interesting through through most of it and I wasn't bored at any point but I didn't find her funny at all. Um, I, I haven't watched Parks and Rec, maybe if I had then I'd enjoy it more because the, the kind of little clips I've seen of that do look funny but I just didn't click with her um, as a sort of listening experience and it was her reading the audiobook so I would have expected a lot of her sense of humour to have come through. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I got it off my phone and that I have listened to it, um, but I just didn't get on with it. I think comedy especially is something that's so personal to each person, um, so you, if you think she's funny then you'll probably love it. Um, if you don't get on with her then you probably won't, um, but yeah, simple as that I think. And then I worked my way through two art books um, this month, and the first one was Portraits of America um, by Edward Hopper, but I think it was written by, yeah, written by Will, Will and Shymid? because um, it's sort of an extended essay sort of throughout, so you have 
his paintings and then you have the text next to it which is talking about his life and his work. Um, I've never done this kind of thing before with paintings, I've done a few photography ones but never with paintings, completely new to me, had a lot of fun, don't know enough about it to be able to say any more than that but yeah I had fun with it. And on a kind of similar vein I worked my way through The Ballad of Sexual Dependency by Nan Golding. Now this one I can, I do feel that I can say I really really enjoyed it. Um, her style of photography is just stunning um, and I had a lot of sort of emotional response to these pictures which in my mind is what we're aiming for with art but as I say I'm so new to this um, but I did really enjoy working my way through it, I really enjoyed getting the chance to look through all of her pictures and I think the picture of Dieter or Dieter with tulips is one of my favourite photographs that I've seen in a long, long time. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm really glad I got round to it and I'm going to try and keep challenging myself to look at more pieces of art as I go. And then the very last piece of non-fiction that I read in the month of November was The Lonely City by Olivia Lang and this is where that art comes from um, because this book it talks about loneliness and it talks about art in a way that's very intertwined and it talks about how um, the author is sort of experiencing loneliness in her mind with the, with the help of these artists. Um, it was a really interesting book, it's not the kind of thing I normally would pick up, I don't think, um, but it did give me an insight into an area of non-fiction that I normally wouldn't go for. I can understand why this has been praised so highly and um, I did find it a really touching book on the whole. Um, but I do think that I have read other sort of essay collections or, or extended pieces that I preferred this year. Um, but I still think it's well worth a read. If, if you are interested in art um, already, I think this is likely to really be, you know, something that's up your street. Um, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm not someone who knows anything about art. Um, and it encouraged me to go out and seek that, um, which I think is really positive. And there are sort of reproductions of uh, pictures and paintings throughout the book as well, um, so that you kind of have a little bit of a, a sense of, of who she's talking about and, and the work that they were doing. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was a nice way to sort of introduce myself to that as well as the topic of the book itself. Um, so that's everything that I've read in the month of November that was non-fiction, and that's not everything, so as I said, you know, fairly long <laughs> list. Um, but yeah, I had an awful lot of fun this month reading so much non-fiction, and I'm a little bit missing it now that I am reading red fiction for sort of the second half of November um, but you know I think I'd, I would definitely want to keep a mix of the two I don't want to end up reading just non-fiction um, but it was a really nice exercise and I hope that you guys have really enjoyed non-fiction November from your side too um, let me know in the comments down below if you did take part um, what was your favorite book of non-fiction that you read in this month um, and if you didn't take part would you like to in future is it something that maybe even spurred on to you by seeing these these booktube videos talking about non-fiction a little bit more I'll see you guys tomorrow in my next video which will be the rest of my November wrap-up see you then bye bye <laughs>